I'm Scott Al Miller. It is the 4th of January, 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, there's some questions that people have been asking about what the rules are for needing to declare $10,000 USD or more when crossing the border into Nicaragua and in reality into any country. This is a universal rule. So we're going to dig into what you need to do, why it works that way, and why it really shouldn't matter to you when we get back. Now, what's really amazing is not only did people, uh, quite a few, question the $10,000 number and feel like they needed to have more than $10,000 per person, but multiple people, let me repeat that, multiple people posted that $10,000 was absurd and that normal people today would need to carry more like $100,000. Stop and let that think in. They think that normal people, not just a few fringe people, because remember, fringe people just declare the money and deal with it. We're talking about the majority of people, people that we shouldn't need to have to go through banking regulations. I was recording another episode and decided not to waste this gorgeous sunlight that I've got going on. It was kind of yeah, when I was doing the other episode and suddenly it's fantastic. So I'm gonna get, I just, I'm gonna enjoy the sun. I don't wanna go inside. So I had some people ask about bringing $10,000 or more over the border when coming in uh, to Nicaragua. And so I wanna talk about this a little bit because there's there's so much that we need to cover about this because there's, there's things you need to understand and things that I think people are getting wildly weird. Um, and I wanna address all of this. So the first thing is just understanding how the laws work and to whom they apply. So the rule is, and this goes for every country on earth, I have never, ever been to a country where this was not the rule, right? Let's be, let's be clear. United States, Canada, Mexico, all of Central America, I've been to Bolivia, I've been to all over Europe, I've been to Africa. Every country has the same $10,000 USD value of currency or things that act like currency, gold, silver, bearer bonds, whatever. If it acts like a currency, you can only have $10,000 USD worth of it. That's it. That's the rule. If you're going to have 10,000 or more of that, you must declare it. That doesn't mean it's illegal. That doesn't mean you're not allowed to do it. It means that at that point, you must let them know that you're bringing that amount into their country and they will make a determination of whether you can come in with it or what you're gonna do with it or whatever. They're gonna ask you questions. What they, what they do is up to them at that point. But every country has the same rule and it's not a rule that they're making up individually. This is a rule that was agreed upon probably at the UN, but who knows. But the United States definitely spearheaded this, which is why it's $10,000 USD, that is the number. And and it is very specifically the same number that applies to banks worldwide for transfers because it is the money laundering monitoring number. That is where that $10,000 comes from. It has nothing to do with what is convenient to carry, has nothing to do with what you're gonna spend, it has nothing to do with anything having to do with you. It is a number that all banks worldwide have agreed to or are flat out refusing to agree to uh, that they use as a trigger for when they need to carefully monitor a transaction for money laundering. At less money than that, they consider it a trivial transaction, a, uh, a nominal transaction where it's much more like a personal expense. When you cross the $10,000 barrier, it's considered something that may be used to buy a car, something that may be used to buy a house, something that may be used to start a business, something that may be used to do something nefarious. Not that you're going to do something nefarious. No one assumes that, but it's an amount of money that it is a segment of money that could easily be part of a money laundering scheme. It is not that $10,000 alone is enough to be a problem. It is that in $10,000 increments, you could launder a ridiculous amount of money that causes a lot of problems. And yes, you could still cause a lot of problems if you're laundering $9,999 at a time, but they have to put the barrier somewhere. The limit is not based on what it itself could do. It's how quickly could you move, say, a few million dollars. If you were moving them a thousand dollars at a time, well, you'd have to do a thousand transactions. They'd probably catch you one way or another. But if you're moving 10,000, well, you only have to do a hundred transactions. Still likely to catch you, but a lot harder. But they want to make it that at that point, it is worth the effort of the government or the bank or whatever looking into what you're doing to make sure that they know what the source of the money is and where it's going. That's all. So as long as you're declaring it, you're generally okay. I wouldn't 
ever want to be in a situation where I needed to declare how much cash I was bringing into a country, but that's a different problem. It's not illegal, you just have to declare it. Now that said, there's no reason for any normal person to be moving over $10,000. It doesn't matter what you're about to say, it doesn't make sense to bring $10,000 in cash over a border. There are cases where bringing a thousand or two thousand over a border could make sense. And remember also, this is $10,000 per person. So the examples I've had people give me always include, well, I have a family and, and you know, for example, I have a family of four and, and $10,000 is what it takes to, right, and you come up with a number of things. Well, that's great, but that's not $10,000 that you're allowed to bring. That's $40,000 that you're allowed to bring because laws like how much are you allowed to bring in apply to an individual person, not parents and children, right? So you can bring in quite a bit as long as it's multiple people who are coming in. So you're not really bumping, even if you're a family of 10, right? It's not like you're limited to $1,000 per person, which would still be plenty in most cases, but you don't have to worry. It's $10,000 per person. And that allows you to do things like get a taxi, get food, get a hotel, whatever you might need to do. There's reasonably never a flight, never a bus, never a hotel that you need that's going to cost more than that. And remember, you get to have credit cards, you get to have debit cards, you get to have whatever, right? You have all your normal things. This is just the cash that you have. And it's not the amount of cash you can ever have. It is the amount of cash you can have at the moment that you cross a border on your person. You can have as much cash as you want waiting for you. You can have as much cash as you want left behind. Like if you're coming from Costa Rica into Nicaragua, you could have a hundred million dollars in cash sitting in a huge pile in a barn somewhere. And if, if you do have that, you need someone to watch over it and make sure nothing bad happens. So let me know, I'll, I'll arrange something for you. And, and if you have, you know, another hundred million dollars sitting in Nicaragua in a barn also being watched over and you want to move back and forth, no problem. It's just you can only move $10,000 on your person at a time without telling someone, right? But the money can exist other places. It's the movement of the money that they're monitoring, right? So, so when people are like freaking out about how much money we're talking about, this has nothing to do with what's in your bank account. It has nothing to do with what, how much you make. It has nothing to do with anything about you. It is just about how we monitor transfers of money from bank to bank or country to country. Now, what's a maximum reasonable amount of money to bring over a border? Well, this gives you some gray area. And if you're, if you're poor, you might say, well, $300 is a lot of money to be carrying on your person. I wouldn't want to take that kind of risk. I'll, you know, I'll walk somewhere, I'll take a bus. Why would I ever need over $300? And if you're relatively affluent, you might be like, well, I could easily burn through $5,000 in a day. I'm going to hire a private taxi. I'm going to, you know, pay for a whole bunch of fancy food. I'm going to have things delivered. I want to pay for my hotel in, in cash. Okay. There's, you know, play around a little bit, think about it carefully, but what we're talking about is literally cash on your person when crossing an international border. It is very rare when traveling that you're going to want to do a lot of transactions in cash. I, I realize this is counterintuitive. I personally will tell you quite often to do more things in cash. Yes, you should do more things in cash than most people do. If you don't use cash, especially like in Latin America or Southeast Asia, um, you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. It's very hard to get really awesome street food or super cheap food or just a lot, go to the market and do things. A lot of things aren't available unless you have cash. So I do recommend having cash, but I don't recommend bringing it from another country. I also recommend that you have cash locally, right? Hit an ATM, once you're in the country, take out some money. Take out $100,000 if that's what you wanna do. If you're gonna spend $100,000 walking around the market, by all means, hit up the ATM, pull out $100,000 in whatever the local currency is. Have at it, no problem at all. They will make you take it out in chunks small enough that it doesn't hit the money laundering numbers and then you will just you know spend a bit of time getting it out but you can go shopping like crazy all you want with cash it's not a problem but when you're crossing a border think about what those actions entail first of all it's a very dangerous thing you're in a moment where there's a lot of people going through your luggage a lot of people going through the stuff on your person there is a lot of uh potential like for you to be separated from your bags just a lot of stuff happens when you're crossing a border first of all during the border process but also immediately having crossed the border that can be a time where there's a lot of upheaval and you are a target people know that you just crossed a border if someone's going Going to target someone, someone carrying outrageous amounts of money over a border is going to be a little bit more of a target than someone else. And if they know you're carrying that money, you're going to be a huge target in any country, even in the U.S., carrying $10,000 of cash makes people go, I, I, could, I could excuse being a bad guy for $10,000 cash that no one can trace. So I recommend not tempting fate with that kind of thing. Like that's just not a good idea. Realistically, you can't use $10,000 per person to do anything 
on the time that you're crossing a border. Because remember, you're only talking about the amount of money that you will spend that can't be a credit card and that you can't get to an ATM and take money out. And I don't know where you're traveling or where you have traveled that you feel you could spend $10,000 per person in cash where you had no access to use a credit card, so generally no hotel is gonna be part of that equation, and you can't go to any slightly fancier uh, restaurant, you're stuck just eating street food. Basically, any place that will require you to take to use cash is also going to not cost all that much. Spending $1,000 on, on a meal is gonna be really hard to do when you're getting it from a place that doesn't take a credit card. Not impossible, not by any stretch, but it's unlikely. And that's only if you're splurging and like you're not being careful. If you're in a position where you just gotta get to an ATM and you need to save money for a little bit, there's generally something you can do, right? We're talking about ex such an extreme theoretical fringe case of I need to spend all this money but I can't get to an ATM and I can't use a credit card and it's just crazy, right? Very, very unlikely. And of course, there's always the question of where did this cash come from in the first place, which is exactly what the government's gonna wanna know anyway. Where are you getting all this cash in the country you're coming from that you can't get it in the country you're going to? Chances are you are hitting up an ATM in that country or a bank that you know and just taking out loads and loads and loads of cash over time to come up with this much cash. I totally understand there are people who spend outrageous amounts of cash while traveling. You do fancier things than I do and you like to use cash and you're going through a lot of it. You don't want to be traced in any way. I get it, okay? Like you are definitely the fringe, but that's okay. I'm the fringe in different ways, in a lot of ways. But they're just, at some point you have to be accommodating. Okay, if I want to cross a border, and I wanna have a lot of cash, and I don't wanna tell anyone about my cash. There's just limits you have to live with. Now, I had multiple people, multiple. So we just discussed why it is completely reasonable for a $10,000 declaration limit to exist. Why nobody, abs Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett going on a party vacation together where they don't want people to know what they're doing still don't need more than $10,000 $10, USD cash each, right? Because they're still just getting to an ATM. Someone will pick them up. If you have that kind of money, someone's gonna come get you. They'll give you credit. Like you have all kinds of options. If they don't need it, you don't need it. And certainly if you're poor, you don't come anywhere close. 10,000 is more than you'll spend on your entire vacation. So we've established that 10,000 is a really high number and it exists for a really solid purpose that affects you in everyday life. You can't work with that kind of cash in your home country without triggering the same problems. That's important here. If you're gonna have, let's say you wanna travel with $50,000 of cash and you're coming from, let's say the United States or Canada or UK, it doesn't matter, to take out of your bank account, $50,000 of cash, you will go over their banking fraud limit five times. That doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. It means you have to prove the provenance of the money and show that you weren't money laundering. So if you're gonna cross a border, you will already have had to have declared it to your own government via the banking system before you're gonna declare it to the border anyway. So that's gonna make it really easy. Where'd this money come from? Uh, you can call my bank, here's where I got it. Oh, cool. Yeah, yep, you're good right? Shouldn't be a problem. If you're legitimately taking the money out and not doing some crazy transaction all in cash, you're going to be all set. Now, I know somebody, again, super fringe, runs a business, everything's in cash, you've never put it anywhere, you're trying to hide from the IRS. Uh, okay, I mean, first of all, we're, we're talking about doing something illegal in most cases, so, and I'm not saying that it's good or bad, I'm just saying you're already on that side of things. Well, don't declare it and hope for the best that no one catches you. Uh, declare it and just be like, hey, I work in cash, what are you going to do? right? Take your chances or put it somewhere and have someone send you money some other way. Like if you have that much money, figure something out. I get it, right? Like those cases exist, but you have to be realistic. The laws and the system are there for travelers and every country has the right to say, look, you're being weird. We don't want you. Or you're being weird. You got to pay a penalty for that. Whatever. Most countries say, if you try to bring in more than 10,000 and they catch you, it is their option to seize it. Not the amount over 10,000, all of it. Eh, they probably won't, but they might, and they definitely have the right to, and you have no one to complain to, right? So be aware. And everybody has it plastered all over their border control. This is so standard. You will see it absolutely everywhere. I don't care where you travel, you will see it. Okay, now I've had multiple people on my channel, we're going for a bus, and their claim is that these people should be able to carry $100,000 US, or its equivalent in cash from another country, in cash, on their person as they physically cross an international border. And the only reason, remember, the only reason 
that someone needs to carry cash across an international border is because they need to use it before they're able to get to a bank, an ATM, or so forth, or to get to a place that they can use a credit card or so forth. This is, they are unable to have a bank in the country, they're unable to have money waiting for them in the country, they're unable to do all these things, yet somehow they're able to have a hundred thousand US in cash to just walk around with. This is not for moving, it's not for relocation, it is not for to spend on your trip, it is nothing like that. It is for getting over the border. Last thing. Think about how much $100,000 is. Also, let's think about that this is not the United States, that in this particular example we're talking about Nicaragua, where the buying power of that money is much higher, at least double, and probably more like triple. So it's the equivalent of carrying more than a quarter million dollars of cash in the United States on you at any given moment. It is also the equivalent annual income of about 35 to 40 families in Nicaragua. Think about carrying an entire neighborhood's annual income on your person. While Nicaragua is not a violent country and violent crime is extremely uncommon, if you're carrying $100,000 of U.S. cash, you are definitely going to be a target. People are willing to die to feed hundreds of people for the year. That is so much money, it is incomprehensible for someone to think of carrying that kind of money around on their person anywhere. Even in the United States, you would certainly be mugged for that. If anyone even got a hint that you were carrying that, you're going to be mugged. People will go out of their way to find you and mug you. If you store that much in your house, they will break into your house for it, right? With weapons. That is too much cash for anyone to have on their persons. It's absurd. Unless, And then also remember or know that in places like Nicaragua, and specifically in Nicaragua, the largest denomination you can actually use is a $20 bill. And I've had some questions about this. So very clear. You only can use cash US dollars in Nicaragua, and you can only use ones, fives, tens, and twenties. That is it. Technically, a $50 or $100 bill will probably get processed by the bank without a problem, but you're taking a risk. No one actually officially accepts it. Even the places that do banking deposits have big signs, no 50s, no 100s. They only take 20s and smaller. They also do not take coins, not because they have a policy against coins, because no one's ever seen one. They have no idea how to take one or how to use it. There's just ones, fives, tens, and 20s. That is it. That is what using US currency looks like here. If you get change, it will be in Cordoba, not in US dollars. There's no need for coinage. There is coinage for small amounts of Cordobas, one Cordoba, five Cordoba. You then have paper for 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 30? Is that right? 40, uh, 50, no, not 40s. I don't even know what there is. 50s, 100s, 200s, 500s, and once in a while you can find a thousand. I really don't know the, the currency, apparently. I started coming up with random amounts of, of Cordoba. And so because of that, there's no need ever for U.S. coins to exist here, and no one wants more coins. Like, that's, you should not want coins. So that, it makes it fairly simple. But that means if you're going to bring in $100,000 in cash, the largest denomination it can be is 20s, or else it's useless, and then you don't need to have brought it in, obviously. So the only way to make it make sense is for it to be usable. That requires it to be 20s or smaller. And I'm going to show you some pictures of what, it, at least claimed online, $100,000 in 20s looks like, because this is not something a normal person can carry on them over a border. It's not that you couldn't lift it, but you can't reasonably bring this with you. It is completely encumbered, right, <laughs> to move this around. It would be absurd to be carrying this kind of cash. So these are the kinds of claims that people make, and I have no idea what people are thinking when they say things like this, because it's so crazy. Even $10,000 is an absurd amount of money in any country in the world to need to have in cash at the moment that you cross a border. But $100,000? That's nuts. There's no country in the world where the average person makes that much in a year, so the that you need between double and 40 times, or some countries 100 times, the annual income of a normal family in cash for the one moment you cross the border before you can get to your bank is nuts. That is simply not reasonable. So I found that both shocking and amusing and, and had to share that, but also explain why all these rules work the way that they do, why these numbers are what they are, why it doesn't matter, no one should be bumping into this. And uh, like with housing, I get a lot of people who are obsessed 
two things that people tend to be obsessed with when I'm talking, well, three things actually, that when people are talking about coming to Nicaragua, they're obsessed with having a house before they get here. They're obsessed with moving massive amounts of either cash on their person, which is exactly what we're talking about here, or transferring their money into Nicaraguan bank accounts, which again, not something you do. I don't know why people think any of these things are wise. They are not actions you should be taking. I don't know what goal they're trying to obtain. No one's ever come up with a reason why they would want to do that. They're just obsessed with needing to do that. And then the last thing is starting a business uh, here in Nicaragua that they would not start somewhere else. They're just obsessed with starting businesses here. And I get starting businesses can be fun, but these are weird things to be OCD about uh, and yet there's this massive percentage of the people who are moving here all want to own a business transferring cash for no logical reason and carry it on their person uh, and uh, uh, buy a house um, long before they've evaluated whether a house makes sense or where they want to have that house in all these cases think would I do these things in America would I you know fly into a new city and feel compelled to have ten thousand dollars cash on my person just to get me to the ATM at the airport, to get into a taxi? Do I want to be carrying that kind of cash in a country where it doesn't go nearly as far? No, you would never want to do that. Why would you want to do that here? The fact that it's another country has no bearing on it, or if it does, it makes it less likely because it's so much more money here. Anyway, a little bit of a rant, a little bit of just shocked at the things that people will say, blows my mind. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you are a person who can carry around $100,000 of cash just because you need it to be able to get to the taxi into your ATM, I would love to help you with the overburden of all that cash that you have. And you can buy me as many coffees as you would like at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That helps this show and helps me bring rational conversations to the world so that all of you can sit back and go, I don't have to be crazy. I can do very common, normal, sensible things, move to a beautiful country or could just come visit and not have to worry about about all these things that everyone seems to be obsessed about and you don't have to look at all these people who are obsessed with buying a house starting a business and carrying cash and say are they on to something no they are not they're not on to something they may be on something they're not on to something thanks for joining me like and subscribe i will see all of you tomorrow